Hey everybody, Paul Fontaine alongside Jeff Hawkins here on the Fight Game Media Network YouTube channel. We're here on X and uh, for those of you listening on audio, I want to thank you as well. And uh, make sure to sign up for the Fight Game Media YouTube uh, video page. If you haven't already, you'll get notifications whenever we or anyone else is live. And I got a new show I'm going to plug later on uh, that, that we'll I'll talk about publicly for the first time. So uh, that's going to be pretty cool. But uh, yeah. Wait, uh, what? A new show? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's I'm still doing this one. Oh darn! I, I actually I never have anything to plug, and I'm gonna have something to plug later. Let me ask so you I'm... something, Paul. Have you ever had a co-host who wore merch from a 42 year old movie? No, I'm here for. This. I watched a 40 year old movie today. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm, was... I'm wearing a uh, a uh, Captain Chaos Cannonball Run shirt. It's pretty. Oh, awesome. nice. Yeah, nice. So... I love that movie. I'm wearing a awesome god shirt from the song of the same name that benson henderson used to walk out to nice yeah um so jeff yeah they finally announced double or nothing we say finally it's eight weeks away that's fine it's no big deal but <laughs> well people like to make plans occasionally true. well and, and i'm going so i'm glad to know that i I'm i have tentatively I, going i have huh? a hotel room reserved just well that's know. it i i i mean that's literally all i have so far yeah. But I, I haven't booked a flight. I do have a hotel room that I didn't pay for. So I literally have no money committed yet. But uh, I'm verbally committed to buy tickets. And uh, I, and I'm going to all the convention stuff. So I'm okay. looking forward to it. Yeah, eight weeks. And uh, wife's given me permission to go for four plus days. So that's fun. She's going away too. So I got to watch Emily for five days. And then she's got to watch her for four days. So uh, yeah. But uh, am... yeah, so MGM oh. Grand. It's yeah. like mobile Boo. And nicely enough, I got four nights at the MGM. So I'm staying in the same hotel as the wrestlers. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm a park, I'm a park MGM guy. I love that place because oh, it's not it's non-smoking. I haven't been there yet, so I don't know, but I've never stayed at MGM. So they offered MGM me four Grand's nights okay. I, I hate going to events there though. Like I oh, I went to both yeah. White Weidman uh versus uh Anderson Silva fights there. Yeah, and it's and, just it's a pain in the ass to leave and to get in because of the bottleneck. Did issue. you go to the Connor Aldo? Or no, not Connor, uh Connor uh Chad Mendez? No, that was know, terrible. Like... Oh my god. It took us 90 minutes to get out of there. Yeah, I I yeah. love T Mobile Arena though. T Mobile yeah, yeah. Arena no, is great. great. Yeah, but uh, I do like the fact that I got four nights for free. So well, that's on, fine. on a holiday weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then uh the other thing was that was making news today, Becky Rent, Becky Wrench. Becky Lynch <laughs> is doing the rounds and uh, and uh, she uh, is talking about, um, you know, her book. That's uh, I think it's I don't know if it's out already or it's coming out later this week. It is um, out. I believe it's out. OK, The Man by mm -hmm. Not Your Average Girl by Rebecca Quinn. But it's like Becky Lynch, The Man, Not Your Average Girl by Rebecca Quinn. I think it's not your average average girl. You're, think you is. are correct. You are. OK. Correct. Yeah. And so, yeah, she's been doing the interviews. Uh, my buddy uh, Phil Strum interviewed her as well as Ariel. She's Holani actually and... quite good on the media circuit. She is. I, I've, yeah. I've enjoyed some of the things she's done. Like I yeah. watched uh, I watched her do um, Last Meals with uh, the Mythical Kitchen crew over at Good Mythical Morning. They're down the road here in Burbank. Uh, Let's get her on this show. She's done stuff there uh, before. Yeah. Um, I, I like to... I liked, I think it was the, today, it was either today or CBS this morning interview. I thought she did a really good job oh, really? on that one too. Oh, yeah. so she's like, yeah, she's really doing everything then. Mm -hmm. But one of the nuggets that she's let out, I think it was on the Errol Hawani show, is that um, her contract has two months left. So naturally this has people speculating, is she coming to AEW? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I don't think so. No. <laughs> um, but I do think it's in her best interest to make people think she it, will look if tony will overpay her and yeah. and pay more than mercedes which will drive mercedes absolutely nuts sure she'll and go that's probably, and that's probably what it would take to get her so oh it would that, that'd that, be the minimum it would take to get her but that but to get even to get to that point wwe would have to not sign her before she becomes a free agent and i think we both expect that you know, she'll sign before she even hits a market. Oh yeah. No, she's, yeah. uh, she's the, I think she's the linchpin. I mean, other than I think Rhea and Bianca Unintended? are probably there. Oh God. I did make a <laughs> pun there, didn't I? Darn it. <laughs> Five bucks in the pun jar for Jeff. Um, yeah. I, I got a few I, tonight. I, I, look, I think she's, she's the, I, I say this about the horse women. 
Like Bailey's the best bell to bell. Charlotte's the best athlete. Mercedes does the biggest high spots and the biggest moments, but Lynch is the biggest star of them. And I, I think I just, I just don't see them letting her walk unless her demands are outrageous. And I don't see her demands being that outrageous, especially she gets to go to work with her husband. She gets to bring her kid along free daycare, all that other. Stuff. Well, here's the thing. If, I mean, the, 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 the word was, was that WWE probably could have kept Sasha if they would have paid her what they paid Charlotte Yeah, and they didn't want to pay her what they paid Charlotte. So the question is, are they willing to pay Becky what they paid Charlotte? And yes. my guess is yes. But again, what you got to remember, Jeff, and uh, I know you have a lot of experience with WWE. You, <laughs> you know, you're close with people that used to work there. Uh-huh. Um, maybe even people that still do. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is TKO. And TKO has a habit of letting that's true. people letting people go. No, you no, know, that no, that's a very good point. I hadn't even thought of. To but, be honest with you, is that it, said, but, people in the position of Becky generally are the people that they would keep. Yeah, because um, TKO likes its stars. I mean, they're correct, not going to overpay yeah. for an up and comer necessarily. But once you once you yeah. hit that peak pinnacle of of stardom, which she has, and you can carry a brand, and you can carry a show, and you can carry a WrestleMania. Yeah, they're they're gonna pay her. I, I think yeah. TK. I think even TKO knows where where that bread is buttered. Matt says uh, she's blessed that AEW exists. Now is the time to say all kinds of nice things about AEW. Wrestlers that bash the competition are enormous morons. They must hate money. Yes, uh, yeah. um, but but I I uh, from from what both of us know, um, yeah. Becky is very happy being a WWE employee for the most yeah. Part. Well, and and she even said like even Vince like you know that I mean I. She didn't say it. I, I didn't listen, so I shouldn't put words in her mouth. But I'm going off what people have told me that she said um, was that she that Vince was always nice to her. Yeah. And so well, one, you know, once 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 he found out that he could count on her to headline yeah. and, and, and get an audience behind her. Yeah. You're, you're golden in Vince's eyes. Exactly. I mean, and then what he you know, he likely did to other people, you know, that's I think she's just leaving that in the hands of the authorities. And, yeah, uh, I mean, know. and then look, she, <laughs> hers is an interesting story because I mean, the, the, the most fascinating thing is go watch uh, the women's evolution pay per view, and it's not until they in it's not until three quarters of the match where they finally drop the facade that Becky's the heel when the crowd mm -hmm. desperately wants yeah. her to be the baby face. They tried that, and and there are very few performers who can sway an audience to that point where it's like they can go against the corporate. Uh, plan and absolutely ruin it. Well, the and the ironic thing is now is that the roles are reversed, and she's supposed to be the baby face going into the match with Rhea. Yeah, and the crowd is choosing Rhea. Yeah, and Becky is pivoting. Like yeah. you can hear it in Becky's promos. She knows mm -hmm. what's happening. Yeah, and she's setting herself up to be booed if that's what needs to happen. She's yeah, and that's that's also that's also interesting going into a a a, a negotiation. Yeah, yeah. Where, where because... it's like your star's not burning as bright when you're a heel in this position, uh, but especially. you do need a strong heel. You and do. That's, and that's what Drew McIntyre has done. And yeah. so what, what, I, what I was going to say was about the TKO thing. So when you look at people at certain levels and you look at like, I'll look at, I'll take Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Okay. Those guys uh, a year ago were probably at the same level. Drew <laughs> has ri risen his stock. Oh, yeah in that time and Seamus, I mean, he got hurt and I mean, he hasn't really been bad. He's just hasn't been around. And Seamus is the kind of guy that TKO will let go. Yes. Because you know, they just, he's, if he asks for too much. Yes. I mean, even they might not even given him an offer, you okay. know, like from what I heard with Claudio, when, when his time was up, they gave him a, they lowballed him. Yeah. And then he went, to the competition and tried to get a deal there. And then they said, no. And they, and, and then, then and then back, they got, yeah. And then they got mad. And he tried to take, to, he to tried try, to take yes. the lowball offer. And yes. they said No again. Yeah. And then he, no, went, that's exactly then, what happened. Yeah. And then he finally ended up signing with AW, and I think he got a nice deal at the end of it. Oh but, no, no, no. Uh, he signed with WWE. And then, and then, and then when that came out, he, yeah, oh. he, he came back. That, there oh yeah. Yeah. There got, were two got, times got, that that yeah, happened. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm remembering. Yeah. Wrong, yeah. But but I think a guy like Sheamus, you know, is a guy that they would let go. So I'm trying to think like in the women's division, like, you know, they're not going to let people go that are on the come up. They're not going to let people go that are under 30. 
So, you know, if Becky was not a star, they might let her go, but I don't think she would. I can uh, see them letting go of somebody like Bailey. Yeah, and especially since she's which would be a Vegas. shame. Yeah. Because I think she's I think she's the best bell to bell worker they have in the division. And they they probably love her, but I mean if, but I also don't I don't see her as being a person who you know asks for a lot. Like Charlotte, Charlotte could be a borderline decision. That'd be interesting. Well, they just they, they just gave her a new deal though. Yeah, I know. Um, Matt has another interesting point. Conspiracy theory. Nick Khan fed the question to Ariel because they want a free agency win. Uh, that's not the worst theory in the world, given Ariel's history. It's not like Ariel was was throwing up bombs either. Yeah. I mean, these are softball questions for the most part, and she she plays the game. It's it's fine. Yeah. I'm, I don't read too much into it. It very well could have even been the other way where Nick Khan told her, hey, mention your free agency. When if you're you can there. make the most money in WWE, yeah. you're going to go to WWE. Yeah. Probably. And there's the, and, and they are doing the same thing with Drew, too. He's the words recently come out that he still hasn't signed. And I think, you know, his contract's supposedly up after WrestleMania. That's cool. I can't imagine he's building a match with CM Punk if he isn't already signed or at least agreed to sign. But I can see a short term extension. And then, yeah. and then it's like they they built built up his character so he can go make money elsewhere. That'd be fun. Yeah, but but the, but what it's a, it's a different crew now. It's not yeah. Vince who's, who's got Barry on the way true. out. Yeah, and and that would be like you know John Francis and Ganu building up a match with John Jones, and then they just let him go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's get to this dynamite show. Um, so I will say, like on paper, this looked like it was going to be a great show. Um, you know, they had uh, they had uh. Will Ospreay and, and Shibata advertised. They had Swerve Strickland and oh shoot, I forgot about one other thing we gotta mention. Okay. Um uh well it plays into the main event. Um we also had the Swerve Strickland and Takeshita. Uh for the winner, it's gonna be the number one contender because Jeff, the rankings are back. Oh yeah, the rankings are back. Uh the official rankings are gonna be released. Probably as we speak, Tony Khan earlier today said they were going to happen after uh, after Dynamite. So we've got uh, our boy Kevin Ely on the case. And if the rankings are released, he may hop on and fill us in. And uh, I just can't wait. Will we do rankings, rankings talk? Oh, that'll be such great audio. Oh, we're we're not going to we're not giving this much time. <laughs> but I do want to know what they are. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just curious. Um, I, I'm going to. I didn't like this show all that much. Well, I was just going to say, I this match looked, this show looked better this on paper. This show looked it, great on paper, and it yeah. felt like they, th this felt like a show that was there that existed, and they didn't build anything. And it's one of those things where this was a show for people like you, Paul. Well, this okay. Was, and the, this, here's the thing like, when I look at this show, like when I read my notes and when I think back about the matches. Yes. This you know, is like, what you do. Uh, well, yeah, except. I still like as I was watching it, I was thinking like this isn't lighting my world on fire. Okay, um, no, it's fine. Yeah, like I, like it, the, it the first things. match, the first match was awesome. Like, but even though it was awesome, I was disappointed because yeah, I, I'm used to Will Osprey hitting like not just a home run, a grand slam every single time he swings the bat, and this was maybe this was a triple. Like it was, it was great. Triples are awesome. Uh, but I mean, he didn't hit a grand slam. And then the main event was probably as good as I was expecting. But as I'm watching it, there was like zero story to this main event. Yes. Move, 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 I'm move. I'm a move, build move. guy. I'm, I, yeah. I, I, I come out of the show and going, okay, what did they build? And the answer was best friends and the Jacksons, which is fine. They kind of built that. Not yeah. much, but well, a they, little bit. They, they hinted, built, oh, what's going to happen next week? Okay, they built great. they built Osprey Danielson, sort of. Yeah, um, they built Joe and Swerve, but I don't know. Like, I if if I'm at a if I'm at like an eight for Danielson Osprey right now, and by the time we get to the paper, I'll probably be at a ten. I'm at like a three. And I don't Swerve want to compare it to the other company because the other company is building to their biggest show. Well, of that's, the year. you know, and that's part of it. Too. And that's unfair on our part yeah. if we did. But that. but I'm trying to only think about AEW here. And I'm thinking like they're doing a really good job building Danielson and and Osprey. I but don't. I don't. You really don't. eh? I thought I that video don't. package they did today was great. I think the video package is fine. I just think it's it's one of those. It's it's the wrong build. 
it's I I'm sorry. I I'm not into the who's who's the best technical wrestler. And I want to see a fight. I want to see who's the best wrestler. I don't care about the best technical. Well, technical I think that was the wrestler. idea of having them both face Shibata. Yeah, I know that, but that that goes to another problem. So let's get to the match so I can okay. complain about that a little. Bit. All right. So this Danielson or sorry, this Osprey Shibata match. I mean, part of the issue was, and I think it was Matt that brought it up to me on Twitter. And if it wasn't Matt, I'm, I apologize. But um, when I when I said my comment, and the fact is, is this was a Shibata match. This wasn't an Osprey match. And, <laughs> yes. And and so they, you know, and the okay. There's another problem with this show. Crowd was dead for the most part, and I think you give the crowd a cheer. Well, that give me but, this cr- but the, no, the but the problem is dead. part of the problem is is that TSN airs uh, Dynamite in Canada, okay, and Quebec City is primarily French. They yes. do not have French broadcasts in Canada. Okay, so the only broadcast is English. So, so this is a bad place to run a show then. Probably, yeah. I mean, they had a decent crowd. It was like four thousand. No, the crowd. But, I thought the crowd was pretty good. It, it's just, but, but they were seasons. dead at times. Like, and and there were times when they were dead where I think a regular crowd would have popped. Like when they were working on the ground, they were dead. Like you could have heard a pin drop. And okay. when Danielson and Chibata were doing the same thing, wherever the hell that match was, they were popping for everything. Well, yes, but but you okay. This is this is where it gets into my gripe okay. about this. What is Will Ospreay's nickname? The Aerial Assassin. And what kind of match do we throw him into? A, a ground grappling, grappling yeah. on his yeah. second week in, or third week in the company. Basically this is like his putting second free ball in thing. a blood sport match, which they do. No, but, it's like put, it's, it's like putting speedball in a pure match is what it is oh yeah yeah well that was yeah yeah that's a good that's a good point because oh yeah because if he kept going for the ropes and they kept bringing that up like he's never broken any of these submissions yeah and and i was thinking man if if this was a pure match he would have lost already if i'm going (laughs) to a tv taping i want to see something i i you know, this is why you go to live sports and you sign the. I want to chick dig the long ball. I want to see somebody Mark McGuire hit some dingers. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. And instead, what I'm getting, I'm getting the aerial assassin versus Shibata. Okay, let's see some aerial assassinness. Nope. Yeah. Grapple effing. And it's like, <laughs> it was it was really it was the a work good was really match. good. It was it was very good. But um, but that's not what people wanted to see. No. They wanted to see. They want to see Will Osprey destroy Shibata so that we can hype up this match with Danielson. And, oh, Will Osprey's going to kill this fool. And instead, what we got was Shibata taking 75% of this match. Yeah. And yeah. Osprey just doing his finisher when, when Shibata does that, does the lame fighting spirit roar spot. They would do, the, everybody they would does. do the spots where like Osprey would hit him like three times with chops. And Shibata would no sell, and then Shibata would hit him with one, and Osprey would fall like he'd been shot. Serious and question: Why wasn't this a beat the clock match? I don't know because because do the whole point of this is Osprey said, "Oh, you beat Shibata, I'm going to beat him better," and it should have been a countdown the entire time for, for well. Osprey and to and beat if you listen up. to that Osprey promo, the the idea was the last time he faced uh, Shibata, Shibata kicked the shit out of him, which yeah. he did here too. But um, the difference is this time he won. So he's making progress. Did, did we <laughs> see this Shibata match on our television screen? We did not. But they told then us about cares? it. Well, they oh, told us about crap. it. I mean, you know, again, it, th- this is a television program. I understand if you want to go see a Super Indie, you might remember that match from, from 2014 or whatever. But I'll, I'll, I'll remember. I'll remember. You're the fine, Danielson Paul. You're a historian. Match. and that's No, no. Your... I'll remember the Danielson match much longer than I'll remember yes. this one. Yeah. It, yeah. And you're one of the 200,000 people that watched Collision who saw yeah. that match live. It, again, yeah. it, it go, also goes to the fact that Brian Danielson is over in another world right now. Yes. And, that, that nobody cares about. And it's just, it, 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 it's all disconnected at the same time. And that's what's driving me a little bit nuts. It's like I, I came out of the show going, okay, what did that accomplish? And the answer was it didn't accomplish much, to be honest with you. And don't get me wrong. I thought the video package was fine. I just think it's yeah. the wrong tack to take on, on this yeah. match. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned the no selling. So that was, yeah, Osprey hit his Osh cutter. <laughs> Shibata kicked out at one. Then they traded these, like, super hard lariats. Then Osprey went for another Osh cutter. Shibata blocked that one. 
Then uh, Osprey wiped him out with an uppercut and got two. Shibata hit a tiger driver and then he sat up in the middle of the ring. And then uh, Osprey hit what they called the hidden blade, except for it was to the front. And uh, that, that was weird. Uh, but that's what ended up getting the pin. Um, Why don't we give Osprey commander here or something? Somebody who's going to go aerial to aerial with him. Well, I'm sure do this. Come at some point. I'm sure it would. And I get maybe oh, he'll do, maybe he'll get the match with commander. And then Danielson will decide he wants to do a commander match. He fought Shibata. I'm going to fight Shibata. We have to keep yeah. Shibata strong for some reason. Yeah. Well, he's probably going to. So because he's, he's going to go after a ring of honor, secondary title or something. It, it just, yeah. Well, it, that it, pure title is basically his. This is marketing, I mean, and it's yeah. it's it's it. I I it's where I just it's where well, I rebel. I mean, he still can't wrestle in the U.S. It's where <laughs> I rebel. It's where I. Oh, that's right. It's but yeah. it's where I rebel against. Uh, yeah, friends of mine who who just I I want to watch a wrestling show to watch good wrestling. I, I can care less about a three and a half star classic. I really could at this. Point. Well, I, I gave this one four and a half, but well, wow, that's I, great. Yeah, but 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 again, like, that's right. Was, Trent was on the show, so there's your three and a half star. But, but I was disappointed, even though it was four and a half stars. Yeah, I was Will just, Ospreay, it, and I was expecting five. It, the tone was wrong. I'm watching yeah. this. The crowd wants something, and they're not giving it to them. Yeah, it was just. I, I noted that several. This crowd times. was begging for something. This crowd was yeah. begging for action. Is what they were begging yeah. for. What they got was was Shibata grinding a guy on the mat. For three yeah, minutes, and, and you're like, not, no. These fans did not want to see Osprey doing groundwork. Like that's just it. Like that. That's the sum up of chicks the, of this dig match. the long ball. They wanted yeah. to see some dingers, and they popped when when his music hit. Yeah, he came out. They popped, and then when the match started, they died. The aerial um, assassin, and then yeah. ground and pound. It's yeah, good yeah. God. But I'm sure a lot of people. Like I said, I I thought the match was really good. It just wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. Right. All right, uh, so we did get that video package right after this. Oh, they they bowed to each other and shook hands after the match as well. I should point out. Uh, Code so, of honor. Yeah, yeah, in this uh, AEW match. Uh, so video package for Danielson. Tony Schiavone called him the one and only, the greatest. We know he's never won a belt in this company. He um, they won showed a big match all year either. <laughs> no. They showed a lot of early uh, Ring of Honor and New Japan footage, and they they brought up how he was forced to retire. Um, so it was like it was kind of funny because they showed all the Ring of Honor stuff, and then basically the way if you didn't know he was in a in WWE, what you think happened was that he was forced to retire after being in Ring of Honor, and then he came <laughs> back to AW in 2021. Um, although they did show a picture of him from his WWE days at one point. Um, and it's ironic because there's there was a wasn't it was it is it this coming week or was it uh, this past week when they did a Daniel Bryan A and E biography? I think it might have been it last. Was, week. It was, yeah, it was last week. But yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering who this package was supposed to convince because if you watch AEW, <laughs> he's a great technical wrestler who just lost to Eddie Kingston. Yeah, and and lost. You know, if if you, if you're a worldwide wrestling fan, you know that he lost to Zack Saber Jr. earlier. He also it, beat it, him. It, he it, beat it, Shibata. Oh, won't be crap. So did so did Will Osprey. Who's not even supposed. So did Wheeler Yuta. Who's, an, who's a who's an aerial assassin of yeah. a legend? Wheeler Yuta so, beat him too. They they. Oh, they, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it was one of those <laughs> things where you're watching this and going. Are they trying to convince themselves now that, that they can build this as best technician versus Will Ospreay type of a thing? I because yeah, that I doesn't I, Blackpool, I Combat, thought, Blackpool I, I, Combat know, Club not, Daniel or Brian Danielson would be awesome here. Saying you I'm know not what, go back in time and pretend that I wasn't super fired up for this match after Will Ospreay. I'm promo still kind of fired up for this match. Don't get me wrong. I no, just, no, I'm talking for tonight's match. I was okay. fired up for Osprey Shibata after oh, Will's promo last week. Oh okay. yeah. Because when he talked about, like, the last time you beat the piss out of me, I was bleeding, like, all this, I'm like, oh, I want to see Osprey get revenge. And all I saw was him get beat the shit out of again. And then get Yeah, he didn't really get revenge. It didn't look Not like really. a blood blood no. feud, like, oh, I remember I he, this beating. I guess actually. he earned Shibata's respect. So <laughs> there was that. Yeah, that's great. But but again, it's like Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Danison cutting promos on on Will and his his aerial assassinness and and, oh, Oh, you think you're a tough guy now or whatever. That's what I, I want some heat out of this as opposed to uh, this is a dream match and I can't wait to <laughs> wrestle you in the ring. Like, oh, give me the heat. I want the heat, Paul. Yeah. 
All right. Um, <laughs> so the next thing might have been my favorite. I'm thing here to show. steal the show. Thanks, doll. Appreciate it. My next thing might have been my favorite thing on the show. Uh, it was Renee Paquette interviewing the Bucks. Yes. They were mad because Marvez wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> then they pointed out, Matt points out that we had a couple objectives when we came back. We wanted to retire that old bastard sting, and we did that. Uh, we wanted to restructure the elite, and we did that. We brought in Kazushko Okada, and uh, his name got a pop. So, you know, um, that, that's kind of interesting. And then he put over that he beat at Eddie Kingston for the Continental title last week. And he said, tonight he's going to be watching from the back. We don't need him out there. He said, our most important goal is to get our AEW tag team titles back. And he said, my life was ruined for a year after losing to these guys the first time. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. And then he says, let's have a great show. You're doing a great job, Renee. And then he says, but just one little piece of advice. You need to smile more. And I just, I'm like, at first I was like, that's good I, advice. And then I was like, I, in my mind, I think she smiles a lot. Don't, and then don't tell I'm, women, don't tell women to smile more. That's a, that's a good as lesson. I'm for watching all men. the show every promo. I don't know if this was on purpose, but every time she was on there, she wasn't smiling. And I think, I, I think the bucks got to find her. I popped the, I, I popped for the line that Alex Marvez was better looking. Yeah. He mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so poor Renee, like she's trying not to crack because they told her not to smile. They told her to smile. So she's trying to make sure not to smile, but I think right. she wanted to laugh. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was difficult. Oh, she was I, chomping on her tongue very hard. Yeah. I, I loved it though. Yeah. Um, what I didn't love was the match that followed, which was the young bucks against the private party. Uh, so first off Excalibur was, out of control in this match, <laughs> trying to turn this into the NCAA March Madness tournament. Yes. Apparently now we have the West side brackets and the East side brackets. <laughs> and uh, I think um, the, the young bucks are uh, the one seed and private party was the eight seed. Um, he mentioned, and, uh, I no, think, that uh, was it. That was in the, that was in the, uh, in the first, Oh, uh, was it the first one? Okay. The I first tournament. And he was trying to kind of, bring that parallel to an eight my, seed my being bad. a one seed. They showed highlights of Private Party beating the Bucks in 2019. Yes. That was five years ago. <laughs> These guys are further down the card now than they were then. I agree. Um, yeah. But uh, then Taz, when he's <laughs> referencing the highlights, doesn't say, oh, we saw highlights of that earlier. Taz says we saw the B-roll. What the f is he talking about? Like, B-roll is, he... B -roll, B is a TV term. I understand that. Okay. I understand that. That's not a sports term. They don't right. say that in a hockey game. Oh, show us the B-roll. Uh, you know. Yeah. Geo no, they say should they show us the highlights, and exactly. that's what it should have been, as yeah, opposed to like, yeah, because B-roll makes them sound lesser, and I would agree with that. Yeah. So, um, they uh they did a B bunch. B-roll is something you see in like cooking videos where yes. they're taking pictures yes. of the food and go, let's roll the B-roll. Yes. Know, for yeah. Yeah. But they don't call it the B-roll. Um, so they, uh, yeah, so they, they went outside the ring for, for a bit and one of the, they did something nuts early. They, Matt did a Falcon arrow on Mark Quinn from the barricade to the floor. Poor Mark Quinn was not the same after that. I think he got roughed up. Um, and, uh, they were trying to win by count out. They showed Okada watching on a TV, like a WWE guy in the back. And then I corrected myself because I don't think WWE does that anymore. They were doing this all night. Um, Okada standing as close to I am as to my monitor, which is about, I don't know, two feet. And uh, I don't know why they couldn't give him a dressing room where he could watch like on a couch. He's got to stand in the hall and watch two feet away from the monitor like an idiot. Um, he drives in a Porsche, but he can't get his own room. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so they uh, they went to commercial. Bucks were in control. They came back and it looks like all they did in the commercial was work over Mark Quinn. Crowd was dead. Um. And uh, they like every time private party like made a tag that you would quote unquote call a hot tag. I just called it a cold tag because they would do this tag and then they come in and they just get beaten up again. They were and, gassed. Oh, they, I, I think Mark Quinn really got shooken up by that move outside the ring, like early on, but, but continue. Cause I have a lot to say about that. All right. And uh, during here, they announced that the uh, East side brackets are going to be on collision FTR and the infantry and uh absolutely big and top flight that's my name for them um ricky starks and big bill uh so yeah private party hit gin and juice that probably got the first 
pop of the match. I was shocked that the crowd even knew what that was, although but it's just a cool looking move. Uh, but then uh, Quinn made a tag to Cassidy. They hit bang for your buck on Matt, but Nick made the save. Nick grabbed the ring bell. The ref stopped him from using it. Matt punted Cassidy in the balls. Uh, but then Quinn nailed Matt with a title belt. That looked like it was going to be the finish. And I think the crowd actually thought it was going to be. But then Nick put Matt's foot on the rope to break up the count. At this point, the crowd was just out of it. And uh, Zay made a cold tag. Quinn missed a 630 splash. They took forever to set that up. Cassidy kept moving Matt like here, there, everywhere. And then after he missed the thing, they hit the EVP trigger and uh, got the pin. And uh, this was bad. This was this was not good. Yeah. Uh, tonally, they couldn't get on track because Private Party came out. They came out of the heel tunnel, I think. Oh, did they? they? I worked, don't pay attention. To that I, I, I was trying to pay attention, but oh. they're working like baby faces when they're heel. Well, because they are baby faces. No, they're not. Dang. Are you sure? No, they turned on Top Flight and and uh, oh, Action okay. Andretti, and and they were going down the heel route. But they're they're also Didn't doing Jeff like, Hardy turn on them. They're also doing Hardy spots all night, which yeah. is weird. Well, I think they were, Jeff's the heel. Oh, they well, were gassed. They weren't even getting tags correct because I mean, no, Taz, Taz is burying them. Yeah, he did three times. Tag. They tagged at one point. Yeah, just I, it it was, a, and then the Bucks for as great as they are, oh, could not. In could not they, carry these guys no, and they're in they're in idgaf mode like they're just yeah. out there you know they're wrestling in matt's got a pink suit they're on. wrestling in gear that they can't move around in that's yep. the thing that they're doing and that's a problem yeah especially and, when you're slipping and sliding on the mat but they don't they just don't an care. evp trick they get the evp trigger correct and that's one of the nope. easiest moves to do it, it's this, this well, i blame was, that i blame that on mark quinn because he yeah was, and the, and, but, the, but the tonal shift was so weird too because it's like okay the bucks get the bell and then they kick him in the balls and then but one of the members of private party who have been working as baby faces this entire time and paul thinks they're a baby face now have a title belt to try and knock out the bucks i think that i think the low blow should have been the finish like, I do too. That's yeah. what they've been finishing with before, anyway. Yeah. So just finish with the low blow. But they wanted to do that, that one great. last like spot where the crowd thought it was. Gonna I mean, be this should team. you know what this, this shouldn't have even been a work rate match. This should have been two heel teams trying to out cheat each other. Yeah, they could have done that. Except again, I'm not positive private party or you. I'm not but, positive either anymore. Yeah. But I could swear on the on the on the one rampage I watched. Of, they were. Try to think of who they teamed with. Remember that random rampage match where it was yeah, like but they broke up. But rampage. remember, they also broke up after that. It was like a it was like a twelve oh. man tag, and then they. You know what? You're right. No. They are heels because remember they brought in um, uh, Willie Mac. Yeah, they're auditioning him to be a member of Private. Whatever happened to that? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. They are heels. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, Okada was watching the back still, and he nodded in appreciation. Oh, and they teamed with the Jarrett crew yes, for that 12 man tag yes they did uh they mockingly shake the hands of private party like you know hey good job guys and then uh they did an ad for roh omega and claudio figures like that was disguised as you know just showing off their toys but it was product placement a lot of that tonight uh Along with the woo energy cans at the end of the oh list. yeah but they didn't mention them that was funny no, they did not yeah but they were there uh, they, we got a video package for Kanosuke Takeshita building up the main event. It was basically Don Callis talking over highlights. He mentioned they beat Omega twice, destroyed Jericho and Darby. He says, you can bring Nana all you want in his stupid little dance. You're standing in our way. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Swerve's house. Your house is on my street in my neighborhood. All the houses are mine. And tonight Takeshita is going to take everything from you, including your opportunity to become number one contender. It was a nice little package. I liked the promo. Unfortunately, yeah. they did not... Pay no. it off in the main event in any way, but okay. Not at all. Nope. Uh, they showed a limo arriving. I checked the time. It was uh, 50 minutes after the start of the show, and Mercedes arrived. Fashionably um, which, late. I'm here for when that. When she got out of the cab, I thought it was Jade for a second. <laughs> like I'm, I, Just the way she was dressed. Um, and uh, funny thing is, though, like on in WWE, when they show, they always show these things. Oh, arriving. 112 central time, you know, 245 eastern time, whatever. Mercedes is live. She got there two minutes before her segment started and she was out of there before it was over. Get paid. Uh, I'm here for this. Star. Yeah, no, I I this is not a complaint. Uh she's a star and that made it very clear. 
earlier today, I didn't mention this, but Darby Allen had uh, quote tweeted the AW preview for the show. And he's like, I'm going to be there too. And I'm going to have a, a special guest with me. And uh, there's a lot of speculation going on. Okay, they're in Canada. You know, someone said Sting. I'm like, no, it's not going to be Sting. They're not bringing Sting in with no notice. <laughs> um, and uh, I said, maybe, you know, a local legend. Someone said Jacques Rougeau. I was like, what about PCO? You know, like, that'd be fun. Darby and PCO, you know, I was like, instead, what we got was a video package. I don't know where they were. They may have mentioned it. Um, Darby and Tony Hawk. And uh, it's some sort of thing about skate parts. And basically, yes. this was a paid advertisement to get donations for a project of Tony Hawk's. Uh, well, really Darby was originally going to climb Mount Everest for uh, for charity for Tony Con for, Tony, oh. Con for Tony Hawk's skate park initiative oh, type of thing. So this was to kind of maybe make up for some of the money. Okay, well, then, it, I mean, it's a nice thing. It was... At, at one point, Tony Hawk thing, is ageless, though. I mean, that dude was, yeah. old, was old when I was growing up and in skating. I had a I had a hot pink Tony Hawk skateboard. You're um, a TV guy. Yeah. Talk about ageless. This is a total non sequitur, but you know how old Dermot Mulroney is. See, I always get Dermot Mulroney and Dylan. I know, and Dermot mix up. But oh, Dermot, no, and it's actually Dylan McDermott I'm talking about. Oh, Dylan McDermott. <laughs> uh, Dylan McDermott. I think is uh, like 62, 63. 62. Yeah, he looks exactly the same as he did yes. when he was on the yes, practice. He's a good-looking man. I, I, in yeah. 1997, he was on the practice, and he looked 40 then, and he looks 40 now. Like, oh, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. dating Maggie Q will keep you young. Yeah, I'm watching him on uh, FBI Most Wanted, and I'm just you're talking like, Dylan I'm, McDermott now, not Dermot Mulroney, right? Correct. Yeah, Dylan. McDermott. Okay. So I'm watching. I'm watching the show, and I'm like, I'm looking at him, and I'm like, okay, like how old is he? Like he's got to be at least fifty, but he doesn't look. I, I'd kill for his hairline. That's all. Oh, I mean, he's a good-looking yeah. man. I'd, I'd make yeah. out with him. Yeah, I I, you know, I'm I don't swing that way, but I don't I'd, either. I'd but man, I'd, I'd make out with him. Yeah, yeah. I I well, I, I take the <laughs> I take the settlement, anyways. Um, all right. <laughs> Speaking of settlements, Chris Jericho and Hook. No, uh, um, yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah. Actually, that is the next. Is segment. it? Is it next? Yeah. Uh, Tony Hawk planted off his broken foot. I should. have pointed that out as well when, when he's doing one of his tricks darby's tony hawk or, or uh tony or, hawk uh, did a trick and he planted off a of darby's foot off a of darby's foot. Foot. okay yeah. thank you yeah okay yeah uh yeah we got remarkable renee paquette and hook and jericho so remember last week jericho promised that he was going to give hook something this week <laughs> and you had a great idea yeah i thought i was gonna give him the lionheart moniker yeah uh no 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 he's gonna give him advice come, come to my room <laughs> Yeah, my nice room alone, yeah. and I'll give you yeah. advice. Yeah, you Sign exceeded my first. expectations. I'm a, I, I'm willing <laughs> to give you advice to, be, for you to become a former, to for you to become a future world champion. And uh, I'm like, that's it. <laughs> He's and totally said, never done that before. No, he said, I appreciate Allegedly. it, but I know who you are. It's like, oh yeah, Hook is not stupid. I know you're just trying to glom off my heat. <laughs> If he had called him a clout vampire, it would have been a five star save. I mean, I he, God. he might as well have. Um, but uh, and then Chris said, Okay, okay, <laughs> I know who you are too, and I know who you can be. And then he fist bumped him and oh, hooks, hook reluctantly fist bumped him. So, yeah, it was yeah. nothing. It was who absolutely is gonna nothing. give a crap about a Chris Jericho heel turn on hook and nobody except he might not. I have a feeling oh, that this may I just be this, oh, you think this is gonna be, just be a mentor. This I think I also think Ridge Holland might have retired. You know what? So you know what this might be. This might be Jericho making the save for Hook again in another exit. Yeah, just to, just to prove that I'm not that guy anymore. And the crowd's gonna boom anyways. Be be before Hager and him turn on somebody. <laughs> these crowd, this crowd is sick. I will not crowd Jericho. blame. I will not crowd blame because no, no, I don't mean this cheer. specific crowd. I mean. AW fans in every city are sick and tired of Chris Jericho. Yes, they want a break. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, all we need is like all we need is like two months. Go off do your Chris music. Jericho. Go sing. Go do. Go Judas, to Europe come back. and sell out Fozzy concerts, and then come back refreshed, renewed. Playing Judas. Play Drop Judas. That stupid Lionheart music. Yes. Nobody wants to hear White Lion and or White Zombie. White and, Lion. <laughs> uh, I like White Lion. Nobody wants Don't to hear White Zombie. Don't forget and... me when I'm gone. No, that's not White. That's not. Oh, no, white that's Lion. White. That's uh, that's uh, White Tiger. Simple Minds, like isn't it? No, no, no. 
They're oh, Canadian. Uh, Glass band. Tiger. Glass Tiger. Glass Tiger. Thank you. Yeah. No, White Lion is. Who's White Lion? Oh God, they they yeah. suck. I love that song. <laughs> um, all right, Mercedes got her full entrance to come out and do commentary, and then uh, love the it, outfit. Yeah, it was good. Nice I outfit. did. I Stokely it, comes out with sure. Willow, and I'm yeah. like, oh man, he chose Willow over Statlander. But then, then I think it was Anna J comes out next. It was Anna J, and then. Statlander comes out also with Stokely. So uh-huh. Stokely hauled ass to the back to make another entrance with that was a nice touch. I like that. And then the last one uh was uh Sky Blue, I believe. Yeah. And uh yeah, so they had a match. Um it was they a bit of a mess. It, it was but but it was a good mess. Like they, you know, they they hit a lot of moves. Now, the problem with this match in my opinion was Mercedes on commentary. Um, a little bit. The, the and the for the most part, it was fun when she was watching and getting into the match and they would show her reacting. You could hear her reacting like that was kind of cool. That was cool, but she needed to have an opinion and she didn't yes. have a strong opinion. Well, except the one opinion she had was bad. And yeah, it yeah. Was, she at the very beginning it was towing that it, heel line. Well, she said she has unbusiness with unfinished, unfinished business, business with, Willow. with Willow. And she said, which defeated me last year? And I'm like, I, I rewound that. Did, did I hear this right? So she's calling, she's basically calling Willow an it. I think she meant to say who defeated me last year, but yes. Yeah. But, and regardless, that's fine. Speaking was never her strong point. And then she says, um, she asked Excalibur asked if she blamed Willow for the injury. And she said, I don't trust that girl's smile. And it's like, Willow is the most natural baby face they have. The crowd has taken her every step of the way. And here you got Mercedes saying she doesn't trust her smile. She should have had an opinion about all four women. And and I thought they came close to that, but I mean a strong opinion about well, all she, four. Well, she she liked Statlander. No, um, well, she no, does. but she liked, but I, I just mean in terms of competition or what I would do if I was fighting her type of a yeah. thing. Something something a little bit more it's still because she unclear. was playing she was playing she was playing character here, and that's not yeah. what we wanted out of her. We wanted her to be the expert on the division. And say, okay, if I was fighting Statlander yeah, because she's so yeah. tall, I'd be doing this right now. That's what yeah. we wanted out of her, and we didn't get that. We got the I'm. She, this is more of the I'm happy to be here in AEW's women's division, and it was fine. It just wasn't great, and that was the problem yeah. with it. Although I will say, for the match at least, yeah, the, the match. I, 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 don't, I don't give her enough flowers, but Anna Jay's actually improved, and it's not too late for her to. There were rumors she might do an excursion to stardom, but. Uh, it's not too late to put her on an excursion and to get her to no. improve. Sky and Blue, Sky Blue is becoming a pretty good heel. She's decent. Yeah, like she's she's no she's learning her role. And um uh, and I actually you know one thing that I was really impressed with was um you can tell Mercedes has been watching the stuff because yes. when when uh, when Sky Blue set up the cold blue Yeah, um, she called it. She she called it before it happened. And, and you know what I saw right before that? Our our boy Trevor, the Irish wrestling fan, going, oh, this will be a test. Like uh, uh, she was called, he called her uh, Mercedes Monet Jones or whatever. See oh. if she's been paying attention, like unlike Booker T to the division or whatever. It's like, well, I guess proved you wrong there. And you know what's <laughs> funny? I it, it's, it's is my wife was in the room at the time, and uh, she was you know helping with Emily, and she was listening to the to the match, but she wasn't watching it. And when she heard Mercedes say Code Blue. My wife like turned around. She's like, "Oh, what's a code blue?" Like, so she like and, it actually and she got Taz to pop for too. Wow, you yeah. knew the move, kind of. Yeah, thing. No, but that my was wife very was like, that got her interested in. Oh, that sounds cool, you know. Like, so I explained it to her, and then she's like, "Oh," and, and then she didn't win with it. But uh, you know, I said, "Well, yeah, she's not the one that was going to win." Yeah, r- reports of Mercedes coming into half acid are grad are greatly yeah. exaggerated. No, no, no. Um, now as the match went on, she said less and less, and she was just yes. basically watching the match. And the story in the match was basically Willow and Statlander were were kind of working together, but then they would get into it with each other. And then at one point they were going to square off, but Sky Blue got in between them. And uh, then Willow gave Sky a DVD, uh, Death Valley Driver on the apron. Mercedes lost her shit at that one. Yeah. Like she was just super impressed. Statlander went for a pile driver. Anna rolled her up. And Mercedes was cheering for Anna at this point. And then uh, Willow came in and gave Anna a power bomb right in the middle for the win. And nobody broke it up. And she got the pin. And uh, immediately she got attacked by Julia Hart. 
And Mercedes, she didn't make the save, but she just stood up and kind of stared at Anna. And then eventually Statlander made the save and hugged Willow and Sky Blue and uh, Julia I thought left. Willow should have pinned Statlander. Uh, yeah, I, I, thought, probably, I thought that but... was the answer to this match. I thought that's yeah. why all four of them were in there. I think that one of those two were going to turn on the other and then Mercedes put a kibosh on that one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I am, I'm also kind of here for a Mercedes versus Anna J death match. Yeah, yeah. Um, queen, our queen of the death match and Mercedes. Come on, man. So, so we're going to get Julia Hart and Willow now at Dynasty, which yeah, means yeah. we're probably not going to see Mercedes wrestle until at least double or nothing. Double or nothing is going to be the Willow yeah. match. Yeah. And and assuming Willow wins the TBS title. I would. Um, I think she is. I mean, I, I yeah. But then that means she only gets the title for a month. But yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to see Mercedes wrestle. I'm going to see Will Osprey wrestle. I'm going to see Kazushiko Okada wrestle. That's I think we cool. are going to see them, her, them wrestle. Oh, oh yeah. You're going to be there. Cool. I might. Cool. Yeah. Cool. See if I get um, tickets tomorrow. Yeah. Why? Well, uh, Pretty soon. Oh, we'll talk. We'll talk off air. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. So that's that. All right. Next, we got Renee with the legendary Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> By the way, for those that <laughs> don't segment. know. For those that don't know, you know that Dustin is uh, Renee's favorite wrestler, right? Really? Like, yeah, for for real. I did not know that. She uh, she used to do a show in Canada called Right After Wrestling that aired okay, after yeah. Raw. Yeah. And she's always talked about that. She would come on shows painted up as Gold Dust, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, she liked Gold Dust. She didn't like Dustin. Rhodes. She likes Dustin Rhodes too. Like, okay. she's it's yeah. It, this has gone back. Well, I you call know, him the natural. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But, uh, <laughs> definitely the WWE version. Uh, she mentioned that he's 3-1 in 2024. Asked him what's next. He said, well, uh, my year started with a bang. Everyone on this roster is so talented. Every match I've had has been bangers. This is why I thought, oh, they're setting him up for a match with Sheamus. I don't know. But uh, he said, it's surprising at 55 years old. I'm still as passionate as ever. And then in comes the butcher. All right, who, stop. All stop. Because right. here's where I go, oh. My interest is peaked. The okay. butchers come out to cut a promo on him. But then they did comedy. And 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 and, yeah. <laughs> ooh, and, and that and that and that and that Blade Butcher versus QT and and Dustin Bunkhouse match was a yeah. banger. I'm like, I am here for this. I I'm, I'm forgot cool. about that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know, Butcher is kind of slimmed down. He's kind of got. He's got. He's coming in with some tood. I like. He looks this. older than Dustin. Yes. <laughs> and then we got your mustache smells. And he says, oh, oh it's got it its has own its little own musk. musk. Yeah. <laughs> F off. F <laughs> all the way off. Because I'm looking for a hoss fight and you're giving me wacky crap. No. No, well, I will not accept this. Paul well, Butcher Fontaine. challenged him to a match on Rampage, which is going to be a hoss fight. Um, oh, no, no, Dust- no. He's going to win by knocking him out with the scent of his mustache. Maybe. Uh, no, Dustin's going to win. Come on. Uh, Dustin says, you think I'm going to be your stepping stone? Butcher says, yes. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that was awesome. And, and, and Harkins, my favorite line in The Dark Knight. Yeah. You he think you can come he, in here and do that to us? Yeah. <laughs> he says, you're going to find out why I'm a natural born legend and everybody loves me, including Canada. Oh, I was hoping for natural born killer. Yeah. No, natural born legend. Uh, natural born legend. Yeah. I like Dustin. He's uh, I love Dustin. Yeah. I love I love middle-aged men who still go out there and do it. And you know, I, I can do without the face paint, don't get me wrong. I was in the crowd for his first matches uh as Gold Dust. <laughs> Where are you? And uh yeah, and I, I was in the front row and I, I I heckled him. I said, uh, your daddy would be ashamed of you. I was in one of I was in the audience for one of his first house shows. Oh wow! Like back in the like back in the crocky days. Oh yeah! yeah wow! Yeah, I liked and, him. Him and I liked him Kendall, I think, were teaming. Oh wow! One. Oh my god! <laughs> a couple of the whitest oh, white meat oh, baby faces it's, out ever. There, there's a lot of lanky geese in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was before either one of them put on some weight. Uh, we got another video package. Uh, someone in the Discord called uh, tonight's show "Video Package Jones." Uh, there's a lot of video packages tonight. Um, this one was, uh, uh, from Turner classic movies and it was Tony storm with Ben, whatever ben Mankiewicz. Mankiewicz. Okay. Yeah. He's the grandson of a very, uh, famous, uh, screenwriter. 
Yeah. So but he's the, also uh, a host on TCM. That's I have no idea team. what the hell this was about, except I do. Re- I do did make note of at the end when Tony asked Ben to repeat after me, chin up. <laughs> and he says, chin up, tits out. I'm not going to say that. that. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and watch out for the shoe. I have no idea what that means. And then she walks off, throws the shoe, and he's like, oh, that's self-explanatory. <laughs> now, Mankiewicz now does the thing uh, that Robert Osborne and also George Clooney's yeah. dad used to do. He does the intros and outros yeah. for a lot of the no. Turner Classic movies. No, I know what he does. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I wasn't just, sure if you knew. because No, I, didn't I just know didn't know what the point of this thing was. was this uh, the point is, the point is she does a class. She does it. Well, it's, it's cross promotion for TCM okay. a little bit. Yeah. But also it, it's, it's, it's bent. <laughs> they did this kind of in the beginning of the tony storm thing too of, yeah of yeah i remember that ben and they, they advertised it ahead of time and everything yeah uh, yeah i just i <laughs> i was hoping for just a little bit more uh, actually i was hoping Mangowitz would take a shoe i was ben hoping was, he'd take a shoe and take a bump, he was I, awesome he's a weasel he um, was awesome in this though like his yes. his reactions were perfect yes he, like he, i don't know if pretty he, good straight man i don't know if he if they practice this but his, no, he has some way... acting training. He tried to okay. he tried to make it in the business okay. a little bit before he did this. Uh, the way thing. he said, "I'm not saying that." Like, I'm was... not saying that. Yeah, <laughs> I just love the beat. There was that half a beat where he just yeah. goes, "I'm not saying that," and and you knew it was coming. Like you you like you you call as soon as she started her catchphrase. But when she said, like, "Watch out for the shoe," I was like, and he goes, "I don't know what that means." I wanted yeah. her to go off screen and throw it at him. That's what yeah. I wanted. Yeah, that's self explanatory. Um, all right, we got a video package for Swerve. Uh, so this is basically his rebuttal to Callus' uh, promo earlier. He didn't say much. He said their motivations are different, and mine is making history. Still playing with his chain. So I, I do feel like they're going to have a – him and Joe are probably going to have a chain match at Dynasty. And he says he promises that Samoa Joe is never going to forget what I'm going to do to you at Dynasty. So he's basically looking past Takeshita, which I guess was smart because he didn't need to worry about Takeshi it sounds like. All right, next up in the West bracket, um, the best friends versus the uh, qualifiers. Uh, they they want to play in game, and uh, and here they were uh, wrestling the United Kingdom. When I the woke United up... United Kingdom. <laughs> or sorry, the Undisputed, Undisputed Kingdom. Kingdom. Okay. Um, I had to be so... reminded of this. I thought last week Wardlow was put in charge as being the ward of Taven he was. and Bennett. Yep. And this week it, he, they were accompanied by who? Uh, Roddy Strong. Okay. Yeah. Um, I watched this morning uh, before work. I watched an old episode of ROH, and uh, ironically enough, this is from 2011, and they were introducing a new character, and it was Michael Bennett, and he had long hair, and he he's good looking dude, and uh, not even close to the build he has now. Uh, managed by brutal Bob Evans, who was basically playing uh, Mickey. Yeah, from uh, from Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he just cut this promo, promised you know he's going to be the biggest star, blah 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 blah. And here we are, thirteen years later, and he's tag team champion of the same company. So, um, I also saw the Bravado Brothers wrestle. Uh, who the hell they? Oh, the world's greatest tag team. Mm-hmm. And uh, they. Oh, I, I saw that match. Yeah. The Bravado brothers, one of them is Andre Chase. Yeah. Yeah. So 13 years later, Andre Har- Chase. Is I believe in... that's Harlem Bravado. That's yes. The, uh, 13 yeah. years later, he's in WWE developmental. And he's, and he's probably he's a bigger killing star it. He's, and he's making yeah. money. I, don't, you yeah. know, I, I, I think he's out kicked his cover. But I was so I, happy for him. I looked ahead two weeks. So I'll, I'll see this in two weeks. The Bravado brothers beat the tag team of Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Yes. On that show. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, that's coming. Anyways, this was uh, Best Friends against... Uh, so it was Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta against uh, Michael Bennett and Matt Taven. Crowd, I think, was chanting for Taven in this match. Um, I'm not positive. They, they were chanting stuff, and the cr- and the announcers were arguing over what they were actually challenging, ch- chanting, I should say. Um, Tony Schiavone called Trent one of the most underrated wrestlers in the company, pointed out that he's the only person in this match who's never had a title in the company. Um, I think he's also the only one that's ever had a five-star match, um, which means nothing. And uh, yeah, this was, you well, know, Chuck closure. Was there. Well, yeah, but he wasn't in the match. 
yeah, Chucky T true. was working the crowd from the outside. Uh, you know, he's doing a good job of that, basically being the manager. And uh, yeah, a crowd at the near the end was chanting, let's go, Taven. I'm sure that's what they were chanting. And uh, Trent and Orange Cassie both hit DDTs on uh, Matt. Trent hit a running knee on Taven, knocked him to the outside. Roddy got on the ring apron and knocked out Chuck Taylor with his right hand. Uh, then Orange Cassie took Strong out with a dive. Kingdom went for a stuffed pile driver, but then Chucky e. T knocked Taven off the top rope, and then Trent rolled up Bennett and got the win. So these guys basically needed interference by their manager to beat these geeks that are the ROH Tag Team Champions. So the ROH Tag Team Champions once again lose. It really sucks to hold ROH belts uh, if you're wrestling in AW because they never win. I, it is uh, also my opinion that this is uh, that this loss is also to just further the Wardlow story. Except Wardlow wasn't there. Exactly. Oh, so he's going to be blamed for that, I guess. He's going to be blamed for this. He pro- except he probably can't get into Canada. Dude, uh, let me let me put it this way. I was so sad hearing Tony saying that uh, all that all those nice things about Trent Beretta. <laughs> <laughs> I like Trent. I. Uh, I <laughs> I don't know. I have this. I have this imaginary feud with Trent Beretta. I don't know oh, what okay. it is. It, it just to me, he is, he is the epitome of of Rampage, okay. three and a half star special. That that uh, he does. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I think I'm still mad that he had a chance to cut a promo and he blew it. That's probably okay. what I'm still angry about. I saw him have a five star match with Shingo Takagi last year. So, uh, so they tried you know, to do the. You remember when he was the big free agent? Get getting him away from new japan who trent yeah no they were gonna they were, they were gonna put him in the singles they were gonna make him a single star they're gonna elevate him from from junior heavyweight to heavyweight and he, hmm. and he took the money with aew instead i well, went hey right. i yeah. you know what given where it new paid. japan is now and he probably it made paid. the right choice probably made that yeah, right probably I just, uh, I mean, you know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the mutton I chops also bothered me too because he looked like an older, he looked like the young Bucks' dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of the Bucks, uh, they interrupted the best friend's hug. So they came out, they did their, they started their entrance. They get about, a, like, not even, I don't know, a tenth of the way down the ramp. And then all of a sudden, the floor drops beneath them and they do a drop down. So they, Came out, did their music. Bringing the jokes. I just yeah. like, dude, stop. Well, this it. the whole purpose was so that they couldn't hug. And uh yeah, and then they're I guess they're wrestling in although the- I do love sycophant Taz. It's so yeah. weird. I didn't like him in that segment, but but throughout the whole thing when he's sucking up to the Jacksons, I laugh. They're well, because he doesn't want to get fined again. Exactly. Um, so they're doing the uh the these two teams are in the western bracket finals, I think next <laughs> they're week. They're on the left hand side of the bracket. That's what they yes. are. Let's go. No, they're in the West Westerners. Finals. Taz, yes. Excalibur pointed this out very clearly. Next uh collision is gonna be the East Finals. Um so we go back to Renee, Stupid. hardest working woman in showbiz, uh Canada's own, they pointed out. And uh she's with Kyle O'Reilly. And uh, she congratulated him on his big win over Brian Keith. And he says, there's no way to get ready, uh, but I pulled it off. He said, it feels good to rip the Band-Aid off. They got, we got such a deep roster here in AEW. There's no such thing as an easy match. Uh, tell that to the Bucks. Um, and uh, she asked him if he's having second thoughts on doing this alone because we saw the uh, the kingdom come out and, and, uh, and uh, chal- uh, congratulate you. And he says, I love those guys, but... I did it on my own last week, and I'm going to do it a lo- on my own again this weekend in London on Collision. And I'm, and then he says, and then he says, Kyle O'Reilly, proven I belong. And it's like, what a the, dork. This was <laughs> the vanilla ice cream of promos <sighs> to the point where I thought he was like, I wasn't alone. I had all these crazy people living inside of me. You know, just, or or I, I, I had bit. all you fans. I'm waiting for the bit. And yeah. I don't know when it's coming, but it has to be. This cannot be his gimmick. His, his, his gimmick cannot be plain Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, and, and I mean, and and I wow. mean, if you didn't if you didn't see this, like this guy. <laughs> I mean, remember uh, who was it? Remember Gunther? Uh, they did a when they did the contract signing with Sammy, and he criticized Sammy for looking like all these people in the crowd. Yes, Kyle O'Reilly looks like every fan in the crowd. Like, Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly looks like half the fans 
about 30 percent of the poker players i watch yeah um yeah comic and, book geek um yeah you know it, it, he just he, i mean he's a good wrestler he, he looks like a grad student is what he looks like yeah which i mean is impressive because he's probably like 35 um there's some, there's some 35 year old grad students true true especially in the astronomy department and your i met him in dallas and uh Hubble telescope super nice guy like, oh yeah no 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 i've yeah. been a pwg very very nice yeah. guy yeah not not the um, most uh loquacious fella in the world no and i think tony really likes him so i do feel like he's probably going to get a pretty nice push here and this is probably the start of it but he's got to work on his look <laughs> sorry i know i'm and, waiting for and the I'm, punch not, I'm not talking about his body either no not, no the, the look will change when the punchline comes yeah you're probably right about that yeah because roddy roddy looks good right now like <laughs> roddy looks like a middle manager at a best buy yeah but he kicked my ass <laughs> yeah or, or you know uh, oh i'm sorry did you not enjoy your meal at sizzler sir <laughs> would you like a refund on that I mean, he, I, he's, yeah, yeah. he is totally he's, middle management roddy strong but, but he looks like he like he kick kill you like he's like he's got he's, you know what he is he, he you know what he is he, he's, he's the middle manager who does jujitsu at night there you or whatever go. there you, there, there you <laughs> go. don't mess with that dude um all right we got an edge video package it's pretty good uh he put he was putting over winning the title last week. Uh, said he's going to take this night to my grave. Forty years of uh, pent up frustration, all worth it. He said he's bloodied, uh, sore, and a bloody mess. It's time he properly won a championship for the first time since 2011. This chapter's closed, and it's time to move on. So it's time for me to defend this TNT title. So on Collision in London, the Cope Open is back, and whoever wants to step up, feel free. So. Is there maybe a Canadian on the route? Uh, Ethan Page, maybe. Yeah, I. Yeah, maybe. Because everything, everything other than that screams Brian Keith. Come on down, <laughs> Commander. Commander um, Brian Keith. Uh, Lee Moriarty. No, I think he already did that one. Lee Johnson. Sh Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Ar Fox. Oh God. Yeah, it's a good thing we got the rankings back. Angelico, <laughs> oh, Angelico, come on, <laughs> fine. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, I think that was a that's an Ian Riccoboni thing that everyone else is forced to do now. Put Ian um, Riccoboni in there. I'd like to see him get destroyed for a few minutes. I'm oh, sorry, Cedric Alexander, or no, Cedric, what's no, Caprice uh, Coleman. Caprice sorry. Coleman out of retirement. Yeah. Sure, you know, we, Nigel. We have all sorts of guys we could get in there. No, not, Nigel no, Nigel, would no, be. Nigel. We're, we're saving Nigel for for Danielson. Yeah, yeah. That's that's well, gonna be a surprise. That's good. That that angle. If that angle doesn't get heat, I don't know yeah. what will. Who's a Canadian? Who's a can? Oh, Stu Grayson. That'd be good. Or Evil Uno. Or Evil Uno. Yes, that's yeah. who's good. That's who's. But getting you know it. what we're getting? Brian Keith. No, you know what makes my nipples hard. Oh God, it's Daddy Magic. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's such a good call, too. Yeah, <laughs> but that would have been tonight. Uh, Nick Wayne, I mean, maybe, but uh, Miss MG Geek is proposing Nick Wayne. It could be Nick Wayne, but that feels like something they'd actually build up. Yeah, that but, feels that actually feels like a pay per view match. Yeah, or Battle of the Belts, maybe. You know, like a uh, a lesser pay per view, like yeah. This next we have one. a Battle of the Belts coming in uh, next month, so okay. We'll that. Uh. All right, Collision is going to be Righteous and Archer against Danielson, Claudio, and Shibata. Is, uh, what? So they are going. What? They're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing that match in Mexico City on Friday. Okay, now is Yuta part of that match or has it been replaced no, with Matt injured. Seidel? Yuta can't okay. wrestle. Yeah, so. That's how Matt Seidel, I go, that's the. Yeah, so that's in Mexico City. So it's Matt Seidel. Uh, Claudio, Danielson, and Moxley are wrestling for CMLL guys on Friday, and then they're flying to to London, Ontario, for Saturday for this big match with the Righteous. It's, it's and all right. Archer. Seidel's the one who's going to have to take the pin in that thing, so we're fine. Yeah, but but I can't believe they're actually flying them into Ottawa for this. Oh, like, or, they're going or on London, Tony's jet. To I this guess, is yeah. they're they're on the private jet there. You know that sometimes he calls people on like. Friday afternoon, evening, even for matches to come to collision. 
And then he's got to find flights for them and get them there and everything. And these are people that don't work for AW. Like whenever you see these, like Tom Lawler shows up, mm. like this, these aren't plans that he just announces on Friday. These are plans he makes on Friday. Does he seem like the kind of guy to have a plan? Uh, remember when he had that uh, clipboard on, at the Jags game? He has the he has the eyes bugging out. I have an yeah. idea. Uh, so we're also going to see FTR in the infantry and top flight against absolutely big. So that's collision. I imagine tomorrow will get announced on Twitter. Uh, and then dynasty, we're going to have the finals, of the AEW tag team tournament, uh, East championship, East champion against the West champion, uh, Julia Hart against Willow for the TBS title and will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. That's all that's official. Uh, but then also Samoa Joe will be defending the title against the winner of the next match. Well, actually I'm not even sure if that's no, they haven't even announced that actually. They've just said that the winner is going to be the number one contender. Right. Um, although I think Joe said at the end of the night that there's going to be a contract signing next week. I think that's what he said, but we'll get to that. Uh, Swerve and uh, Swerve Strickland and Kanosuke Takeshita, number one contenders match. Uh, Callis joined commentary. He, uh, he said that the French Canadian fans are out of control. Um, <clears throat> They shook hands to start, but then they wouldn't let go. So then that kind of played into how the match was going to go. They showed Joe watching TV from the back, just like Okada earlier. Actually, probably the exact same spot. Um, crowd is pretty dead. As I mentioned earlier, um, this was like, this was move, 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 move. No real story, really. Other than, if you want to tell a story, I would say the story was... I think at one point Swerve either got hurt or was selling an injury because every time he tried to do something with his, I believe it was his right arm, his shoulder would go out. Yeah. And yeah, so that was the story. But then also the story was Takeshita was just so damn impressive that by the end of this match, the crowd who didn't really even care about Takeshita at the start was cheering for him. Um, and Swerve is supposed to be the hot baby face. And I don't know, like since Osprey got there, and uh, I think I think Swerve has dropped at least a peg, if not more. He does not feel hot right now. There are things you could have done in this match to prevent that too, like not having Don Callis on commentary and having him actually be the heel manager, manager yeah. in this match. Yeah. Um, Paul, we had a story set up last week for this match, and we just completely blew by it. Well, not only that, Callis set up a story in his in his promo. Yes. And, yeah. But last week we had Takeshita injure his arm, and we had Swerve win a match oh, yeah. with an ar- with an arm lock. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Exactly. And they, yeah, and and Takeshita they did, not did neither nothing. of those things this week. No, if anything, it would have been Swerve that hurt his arm last week, based yes. on what happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I forgot about I, that. Oh man. This is what made me so mad about this match, Paul. Yeah. I pay attention to these things. Like I the, watch the product. Yeah, and well, so do I, but I forget. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, the match, like again, they set it sounds up the like... story last week for the finish. The end is in the beginning. This is what they're doing. Takeshta injures himself so he can take the loss to this newfound skill of joint manipulation by Swerve, and instead. We get the super indie. I'm just going to jump off the top while you stare at me for a while. Ending, I, I'm oh. livid at this match, Paul. I am livid at it, to be honest with you, because it it was a it was a fine match, but they're telling dumb stories. Callus is on the on the promo thing talking about his guy and how much he cares about his guy, and he should be the main heel manager. And so he's letting Nana get all this heat. I'm like. What what are we doing here? Go be a know. heel, Don Callis. Go get booed. Get your guy booed. And then get him screwed out of this match somehow or whatever so that we can move on on the storyline type thing. No, instead, Takeshita, who is now... Takeshita, he, he's still a great talent. And he's big and he's huge. But he always loses in kind of dumb ways. You know? Uh, I got I got some breaking news here. Oh, is Kevin here with rankings talk? Uh, Kevin's not here, but okay. Um, I did get the rankings, so here we go. I think oh, I got. Geez, them. really? Give me a second. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here we go. Can you see that? So people on the uh, people on audio, I'll read them out for you. 
Uh, the men's champion, Samoa Joe, Adam Copeland, Roderick Strong, and Kazushko Okada. Your top five contenders. Swerve Strickland, who, uh, mm. spoiler alert, won the main event. Yeah. Number two contender, Orange Cassidy. I believe he's eight and one, so that's not a bad pick, even though he's wrestling in a tag team right now. Uh, John Moxley, who we haven't seen or heard from in I don't know how long. I think he's on vacation, but nobody's quite sure. Uh, is number three. Will Osprey is number four. And Brian Danielson <laughs> is number five. Um, how is Brian Danielson number five? D Jeff, I don't know. <laughs> you put him uh, up here to talk. I know, I know. This is uh, that I'm ruining. Although I don't know who, like, okay, so I'm looking at this at this rankings. I don't know who else I would put in there. Like, I was actually trying to think about this earlier today and thinking about like who who is hot and like nobody's really hot because it's Brian like, Keith. He's not. <laughs> no, he's not on there. Pac was somebody that some Pac pointed would be out a good unbeaten. one. Yeah, um, Eddie, maybe you know, like he he's only lost double to champion. Okada. Yeah, yeah, he only lost to Okada. He beat Danielson. <laughs> like, why is he ranked? Yeah, yeah. Takeshita's uh, still up there. He's only lost to. Oscar. Yeah, why is Takeshita on there? Well, he did lose to. Um, uh, he lost to Swerve, and he also lost to someone else. Th this I is pre-Swerve, though. No, he lost to. Oscar. No, this is after the Swerve match. Oh, okay. so these are uh, after tonight. Uh, the women. Wait, Takeshita lost again tonight. He lost. Oh no! Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, he lost to Swerve. Yeah, but I mean before. But this is. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he lost another match too. Oh, okay, um, yeah. I can't remember. He, he lost, lost Osprey in the family. Remember? Because you are correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Your women's rankings. Uh, Tony Storm and Julia Hart. I'm surprised Mercedes is the number one contender. How is Willow ranked lower than Mariah May? That's ridiculous. Um, Mar Mariah May is like six and zero. Uh, she, she, she's undefeated. She uh, a lot of jobbers. Um, so Thunder Rosa, number one contender. Mariah May, number two. Willow Nightingale, number three. Deanna Perrazzo, number four. Serena Deeb, number five, who I don't even think we've seen Serena Deeb in, like, feels like months. She's been on but, collision. Yeah, but not wrestling. <laughs> she has, I think she hasn't wrestled in like a month. Her AEW was actually pretty funny. Oh, good for that. Uh, yeah. Tag team championships are vacant. Your top five contenders... The best friends are the number one contenders. <laughs> the Ring of Honor tag team champions not making it on, on the, no. even the top five. Well, but lost I, I guess they lost friends. tonight. I, I forget these came out after tonight. So never Matthew mind. and Nicholas Jackson are number two. John Moxley and Claudio are number three. Big Bill and Ricky Starks are number four. FTR is number five. So, um, yeah, that's your top five there. Right. And then your uh, trios champs. The acclaimed and daddy ass are the champions. The contenders are the Bang Bang Gang, the elite, the elite who've wrestled one match together. And it was really just Okada. It's all right. The uh, Undisputed Kingdom can't buy a win. True. Black Bull Combat Club is number three. Undisputed Kingdom is number four. House of Black is number five, even though I think they've lost like the last The two. Dark Order is better than two of these teams. The Dark there. Order is awesome. off of the rankings. I think this is the first time since the new rankings came out that the Dark Order is, is off them. Okay. I should have waited till after the show for that, but oh well. But there's way more interesting. Brody than King should be the new Mr. Brody for the Dark Order. That's how I'd go. fix that. Ooh, that'd be good. Um, so this match, um, they eventually got the crowd into it. Uh, they were chanting holy shit at one point after Swerve hit a swerve stomp on the apron. Uh, then he rolled him into the ring and he went for it again, but catched a uh power bombed him. I don't exactly know how they went from a swerve stomp to a power bomb, but anyways, he went for a Falcon arrow swerve chopped him in the back of the neck to catch the reverse and hit a wheelbarrow suplex that a V trigger swerve barely got his shoulder up. Callus said swerve could improve with proper management to catch to put swerve on the top rope, went for a superplex swerve fought him off, knocked him down. I mean the kind Missed of management that sits on commentary instead of helping their guy in the number yes. one contender match. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, uh, I missed the swerve swamp swerve countered with a hurricane Rana I went for the uh, last call, um, or is it the house call? It's a house call. And then went for the swerve stomp, but hit it, uh, and he hit it. To catch the kicked out at the last second, swerve hit a battering ram headbutt. Uh, to catch the hit a jumping knee, swerve hit a standing swerve swamp, and then the big pressure and got the win. So this was basically, you know, it was kind of a, kind of a mixture of like just the high impact AEW stuff with a bit of strong style mixed in. What was and, it, Callus um, or Tony who called it Maison de Swerve? Because I, I popped for that. Th I think that was Callus. 
Okay. T- T- Tony Schiavone said when the match was over, if this wasn't a five star match, I've never seen one. Yeah. Shut up, Tony. Don't, don't, this don't was do not star a ratings match. on my match. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is like when, uh, Daniel Cormier tries to score a match. Again, I was waiting, I was waiting for Takeshita's injured elbow and, and Swerve's. Yeah submission game to come into play here but they just absolutely uh yeah because he debuted that him. submission last last week yeah yeah i that, i do that's how he's supposedly going to be beating joe i hope swerve isn't really hurt um he seemed to like it stop you know selling that shoulder by the end of the match he landed maybe. a little wrong on something on there though yeah yeah so hopefully he's okay yeah um they did show Joe watching the match in the back and then renee found him after the match he said ask him how he felt he said, it doesn't matter how I feel. It matters how Swerve feels. Next week, when you sign on that dotted line, you're going to understand what I'm asking you for. You think you're ready. You're not that man. And he walked off, and Renee stared at him. And she Love didn't Joe. smile. She Joe's did great. not smile. Yeah. I hope the Bucks were watching and find her ass. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Did I sound like Matt there? Yes. <laughs> okay. That was that was the goal. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Joe's great. Joe's an awesome champion. I don't know why they have they do the watching the TV thing. Like I really don't. I would have rather had Joe on commentary for this as the number one contender. Yes, match. yeah. And have Callus be acting as a manager, and then Joe just Joe just being nonplussed by the whole thing after he wins. Just give him the applause, leave with the belt in a suit, and and just be they the badass that the, he is. They could have done the thing where Callus was at ringside and Nano was at ringside. They both interfere at different times, and they both get kicked out. Yes, and then, and then it's just Kanosuke and 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 Swerve. I would have been fine with that as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, well, Kevin here. Oh, he's just watching. Okay, I was gonna say he could come in. I thought he was like in the room. He's not. Uh, but uh, yeah, Kevin, we did get the ratings. We just talked about them. Um. So yeah, that was that was Dynamite, and uh, man, I uh, it wasn't my favorite Dynamite of all time, but I mean, it had two really awesome matches. It's just um, trying to think of what this would be like. I don't this, think it accomplished anything on the build, so I, I find it to be kind of a failure in that way. You know what this was to me? Okay, someone brought up McDonald's today. It might have been Matt. Uh, and he said that, uh, you know, it is the old thing that people always say about how, uh, you know, if you like WWE, it's like McDonald's or whatever. And I'm like... Oh, that's so a Tanahashi this, statement. This is like... This is like when you go to McDonald's. Do you do you go ever go to McDonald's? I used to work there, so no. Oh, okay. Well, I do yeah, occasionally, sure, but it's too. I'm expensive sure this now. applies for other for other restaurants. I'm not paying too, twelve but... bucks for a Big Mac when I used to pay two fifty. But go ahead. True. Well, if you go to McDonald's and you get your 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 uh, meal of choice, and for me, it's like a fillet fish. And oh. if I get a really good fillet fish, and but then the fries are cold. And that happens to me all the time. And I don't realize it's time pulled away and I can't do anything about it. And that's what it was. I got my real good filet of fish, which is the, the, the matches, those two matches that bookended the show. Yeah. But even those matches weren't as good as I was hoping they'd be. And the fries sucked. So. Yeah. Like, okay. Now, now I'm getting your vibe. Cause uh, like yeah. one of the disappointments of me not going to WrestleMania this year is it's in one of my favorite food cities in the world. Oh, food and drink okay. cities is Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, I used to go there every year for the uh, improv uh, festival, and then uh, my best friend from college also lives out there. But my, one of my favorite restaurants out there is a place called a uh, Whiskey Village. So Jose Andres joint. Favorite meal I've ever had was there: duck fat fries and a beer cheese sauce with braised short ribs over it. Ooh, and the fries tasted burned. Yeah, so and it looking... ruined it ruined the yeah. entire meal. And that's my favorite meal. And I wait for it, and I travel for it. And look, the, the old fashioned was good, but this is my favorite food and I'm hyping I'm not, this thing I'm, up. I'm not even sure why, like I think, and maybe, you know, like subconsciously it was the stuff you're talking about that I kind of know in the back of my head, but I wasn't thinking about while I was watching, but something was off in that main event, even though it was really good. And it was probably what you said. You yeah. Know, they, it, there it was a they, story. they set something up for last, from last week and they didn't follow through on it. Yeah. And, and, and no that, one's going to point also, that out. And you know what's weird is it was it's a parallel feeling I had to the opening match where it's like yeah. we are hyping this guy as an aerial assassin and we just decided to do the ground pound because it's like, oh, it's Shibata. So we have to do a Shibata match here. No, you don't. And it, it, it's one of those well, things where it's maybe like, you do. I mean, maybe that's the only kind of match Shibata can do. 
Maybe, but then don't put Shabbat in that deal there. Well, you know? yeah, yeah. You don't have to have Shabbat in the match. That's, you know, yeah, do do something where it's a beat yeah. the clock match or, or do another thing in there so that you don't know why that. we're that's WWE. People don't know, like but but it's it's a per well, I mean the whole thing was I'm going to beat him faster. Yeah. Oh, I'm that, gonna be that more seems impressive. to be obvious or yeah. more impressive. Yes. Okay, yeah. so he wasn't more impressive than Danielson. I don't think so, no. No, no, I and think so, so you failed you failed in the obvious setup to the match. Although that's the thing here. Although I want to see Osprey after this match. I want to see him in the back and I want to see if his shoulder looks like it was he dropped a gallon of paint on it like Danielson did after that match. Yeah, I, I it was it's just one of those things where it's like you're setting things up and then you don't follow yeah. through on them instead you decide to yeah. do, you know, something you think is more crowd pleasing and it turns out not to be crowd pleasing. Well, it's cuz Tony's a matchmaker, not a booker. Yes, no, no, he's he's <laughs> well, but no, but he's also he he's a former tape trader, and this is something you know. Was, oh, I want a highlight reel type of. He's thing. a fan. Yeah. I mean, he's I'm a, sure Tony wanted to see Osprey and Shibata. Yes, probably more than anybody watching. Yes, that's that's <laughs> yeah. a problem. It could be, yeah, yeah. Because because yeah, this is not the time for a good wrestling match. This is a time to get Will over. Well, sir, I mean, certainly it could be, but I mean, the, you also got a pay per view to sell. And I do think, like, between the video package afterwards and whatever Osprey's promo next week's going to be, I am fully confident that by the time we get to that pay per view, it's going to do fine. And it's going to do fine on the strength of Danielson and, and, uh, uh, Osprey. Okay. Because... Oh, here's my question for you then. Yeah. Where, okay. I'd like to see that promo because I'm, yeah. I'm wondering who, who do you put in the role of the heel in this match? Uh, because Danielson. because I don't I don't want any of this. Oh, they're just two guys trying to be the best. No, it's, Danielson's you know, gonna be the heel. Danielson's okay. gonna be the heel. Yeah, good because then I want I want uh, I want Danielson to threaten to break his legs or something. I I want some sort of because because I was thinking maybe you put Osprey with with old Callus coming out there again. I don't think you, go, you do I'm that gonna, because you out. yeah they want to they they want Danielson in that role where they can, he can be a babyface or a heel depending on the situation and he is so good that he can do it like yeah they're they're gonna do the Ring of Honor crap though they are maybe, it's, it's, it's gonna be maybe. the handshakes the respect and, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe I'm tired uh, of everybody respecting each other punch somebody in the face that's what I want <laughs> all right um all right Jeff. Uh, yes. Let's do your plugs, and then I'll I'll bring up my show that's coming up. Ah, well, yeah. uh, we'll be doing Shake Them Ropes this week, myself and Chris Novembrino, going over all the other things in stateside wrestling, including this show, including uh, old, old Cody channeling his father at Techwood Studios, getting beaten up in the parking lot. The only thing missing was him yelling, make it good. Uh, we'll see what happens there. We'll see uh, if any other news breaks. We may talk a little Becky Lynch. That would be kind of fun, but uh, that'll drop on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network or in Shake Room Rope's own feed, uh, depending on when we record. I don't know if it's going to be Thursday or Friday yet. That's what happens when you bleep with the final boss. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Make a Satamura? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and me. So next Monday on this very YouTube channel, I'm going to be debuting a new show. Um, title to be determined, although the working title right now is if it the makes Paul you happy. Fontaine vanity project, no, no. I think we should call it that. It might as well be. No, um, <laughs> if it makes you happy. Okay. And my my first guest is going to be uh, the aforementioned Kevin Ely. Oh, nice. And the the concept of this show is going to be, and I'm going to participate in the first show, as well. But it's going to be a a match, a show, an angle, something in your wrestling fandom at some nice. point that made you happy. So tune in, uh, and uh, and it'll be live, but it'll also be archived. So you can join us at 11, 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, 10 in the only times that it matters is Central. And uh, yeah, and it'll be myself and Kevin. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about what makes, us, fun. what makes us happy. I think so. Um, it's very non, uh, and, and we'll be looking for guests. I'm going to try to hit up some, I'll probably ask you at some point. I'm going to ask people in the Fight Game Media family. I'm going to ask people in the wrestling industry, you know, uh, to see if they want to come on. Because I think I think it's important to remember why we became fans and what made us happy as fans um, to watching shows. Um, well, too much of this tribalism shit, you know, AW versus WWE and all Can't that. Can't stand and, the tribalism. And, 
and you know five star matches and all that i was thinking <laughs> back to when i when i was a fan and i would sit and talk to my buddy every tuesday morning we never talked about the matches that were great like we talked about the angles and we the talked promos. about yeah. the promos we talked about things that happened in matches mm -hmm. but we didn't necessarily we talked about the results we didn't care about whether it was a five star match we cared about who won and now it's like I'll look at my list on my chart of the five star matches and everything. I bet you half of them I don't even remember who won. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's sad in a way. So this I'm trying to get back to the roots here with this show. So it'll be yeah next uh, Monday at uh, at ten. And for now it's just gonna be on YouTube. Uh, if it if people like it, we may put it on audio as well. But um, we're we're just gonna start on YouTube. So and it's just gonna be me and with a guest every week. So first week is gonna be Kevin and he's gonna share his and I'm gonna share mine. And then go, going forward after that, it'll just be me and the guests talking about their moment or match or, or show or whatever. So look forward to that. Yeah. So sounds fun. For, so for Jeff, I've been Paul, and this has been The Dynamite Show. Dun, dun, dun. If it makes you happy.